And apologies, one or two technical problems means that we're joining the game a couple of minutes late, but you join it just at the time when hopefully the first score will be coming from Keithley. Simon Irving being given, or Keithley being given a penalty by the referee, and Irving the man who's kicking it. No problem, so Keithley going in the lead 2-0. Let me quickly give you the sides. The Keithley side, Andre Stoop, Ayres, Pinkney, Irving and Keith Dixon. Wooden Robinson at half-back. <clears throat> Brendan Hill, Ramshaw, Dury, Fleury, Larder and Cochrane. <coughs> and the two substitutes, Appleby and Gately. Give you the lee side in a few moments, the kick-off coming. A couple of minutes into the game and already Keithley in the lead 2-0. Midweek game, of course, because the previous game was postponed because of the weather. Phil Larder getting slightly in the way of our cameras there. And the ground, perhaps not in perfect condition, but nevertheless a tribute to the groundsman who spent an enormous amount of time on it to get it as fit as it is at the moment. Keithley in the lead 2-0, driving the ball away through Darren Fleury. Jason Ramshaw. Gareth Cochran over the 20 metre line, looking to get up and play the ball quickly. Lee in mid-table, had one or two good performances lately. And Andy Ayres making a break over the halfway line into the morass of mud over in front of the stand, waiting for the acting halfback to get there, and this time Robinson putting the kick over the top. Coming to rest inside the Lee 20 metre line, and Lee content to drive the ball away. Just have a look at the Lee side whilst they're in possession. Paul Wynn Stanley, Sean Fanning, Hill, Lachlan and Wright, Ingram and Maloney, the two halfbacks, a Fijian, Tol Luku at number eight, Sean Bannister, Mark Meadows, Paul Daniel, John Booth, Scott Martin, and the two substitutes, Chris, Wis Chris Wilson and David Leader. The referee, Nick Oddy. Oddy in his first season of first grade referee. Interesting to judge him, but a good break from acting half back by Lee. Perhaps one or two of the Keithley men caught a trifle unawares as Sean Bannister, the number nine, made the break. And Lee putting the kick over the top. Andre Stoop in perfect position, just waiting for the ball. And in fact, Stoop eventually picking it up, no doubt looking for an offside from the referee, but the referee decreeing that the Lee people were OK. <coughs> Wood to Andy Ayres. Andy Ayres driving the ball away. The wingman's role these days to do infinitely more work than they used to do in the days of the John Atkinson's Alan Smiths at Headingley. And again, the Lee defence up to its mark. Sixth tackle coming up, Keithley taking it to the halfway line and it be Chris Robinson who does the majority of the kicking for Keithley putting the kick over the top and a round of applause telling you that the ball got in touch. Unfortunately that type of kick doesn't count for too much as the opposition always get ball and head and invariably get the ball from the scrum. Interesting point though, I uh, can't remember the last time I saw one against the head as it were in this game of rugby league. Lee being pinned in their own 20 metre area and so far in the game haven't really looked as though they could make any moves of any sort and the Keithley defence to use John Kane's words who's not too far away from me awesome at the moment whether awesome the right word up to you the supporters to decide number 10 Mark Meadows making a half break but without too much success as again the Keithley defence very much under Mark kick going down and the airs Arms on high tells it all, a bad one, the ball going directly into touch, so a chance here for Keithley to put points on the board. 2-0 in the lead, Keithley, Jason Ramshaw moving the ball left to Chris Robinson. Chris Robinson putting the ball inside and the ball virtually coming back to where the first play of the ball was, Jason Ramshaw. Again, Robinson, the fulcrum part of the Keithley attack. Dory, who's proved so successful, making the drive to within five metres of the line. Brendan Hill. Robinson looking to go in between the defence and let the ball go right. Unfortunately for Keithley, the defenders on the ball. Hill making the break for the line. Last tackle indicated by the referee. 2-0, the Cougars in the lead. Ramshaw, long ball out to Andy Ayres. Andy Ayres takes his opposite number on. Fanning can't get to him and Andy Ayres scores a try in the corner to put the Cougars 6-0 in the lead. Irving to take the kick from the touchline side. Simon Irving, who's proved so prolific a goal kicker for the Cougars this season. 
missed the first three games within sight of the 100. And that one nearer the 100 as it goes through the middle and the Cougars, after only eight minutes, already on the way to a victory here at Cougar Park. Lee with the task of bringing the ball up to the halfway line again. Something I think they're going to have to get used to through this game because certainly last weekend against Huddersfield they had a heavy defeat. And I know Phil Lard is expecting the Keithley boys to put on a few points this evening against them. Deep kick. Phil Lard's head again getting in the way of our camera and Andy Ayres just quite content to take a fairly difficult ball and just take it to the 20 metre line. Darren Fleury, Darren Fleury, strong, hard, 14 and a half stone of muscle and Chris Robinson moving the ball out left to Cochrane. Cochrane had Andre Stoop racing up, shouting for the ball but couldn't get the ball out of the tackle and this time it's to big Brendan Hill. Hill knocks the first man off, gets the pass inside but unfortunately as far as Keith is concerned, the lead defenders also read the pass and were very quickly in to take man and ball and Keith Dixon coming to rest in the muddiest part. Same mud baths are good for the complexion. I'm sure Keith can pay testimony for that. And Chris Robinson with a good, well, looked as though it was going to be a good kick, but going dead, so Lee with the tap at 20 metre line. 8-0, the Cougars in the lead. 11 and a half minutes of play gone. And it's Sean Flanning just content to make the half drive. Keithley still tackling hard, intent on keeping Lee down in that 20 metre air and solid tackle coming in from Darren Fleury. Certainly the recipient of that Jason O'Loughlin cards have been too happy. And Lee finding life difficult as the Cougars liven to their task getting in. They have the best defensive record in the second division of course, the Cougars, as well as the most points on the board. And tonight they're looking to increase both the defensive record and the attacking record. Deep kick, well taken by Andre Stoop. Andre Stoop giving the dummy, gets the ball out to the wing, the wingman going down. Well tackled at the end of the day by Fanning. Nick Pinkney at acting halfback, gets the ball in field to Chris Robinson. Robinson to Martin Wood. Wood, long ball out, Gareth Cocker in perfect position. Simon Irving got the wingman with him. Dixon coming in field, Dixon still going forward. Good pass to Martin Wood, super rugby this. Jason Rampshaw, eight metres away from the trial line. Martin Wood to Keith Dixon, who's come in from his wing. Andre Stoop, Andre Stoop gives the dummy, puts the ball in field to Robinson. Robinson going for the try, looks practically a certain score. I thought for a moment he was over the chalk. Keith Dixon with the ball, Andre Stoop. Little shimmy to the right, turn in field. The try coming after 18 minutes, and the Cougars going in the lead by 12 mil. And Simon Irving, who kicked one from the touchline in the eighth minute with a slightly easier attempt at goal this time. Cougars already proving that two points are there for the taking. The music coming over from the Nick O'Neill box over on the far side. And Stoopy being used to that music being played throughout the season. Crowd behind the posts. Extremely happy around about the 3,000 mark one would estimate here at the ground and certainly the support has been absolutely fantastic throughout the season as we get nearer and nearer promotion, hopefully the gates will increase and something down here at Cougar Park. Andre Stoop coming over the loudspeaker, he won't even attempt to imitate Mick O'Neill's guttural voice and it's Simon Irving from the touchline has a good look up at the posts. Certainly had the prolific goal kicking season coming up. And this time allows that little bit too much for the wind and the ball going outside the far upright. But the Cougars well on course for victory in the lead by 12 points to nil. I'd just like to tell the world that John Fair is 15. Lee coming up to take the kick off. And their stand of half, David Ingram, as I said previously, going to get a lot of practice at that throughout the evening. The pitch, in fact, looks extremely gluey 
but does play a great deal better than it does in fact look. Darren Flurry seems to happen every time there's a kickoff, doesn't it? Chris Robinson is there to take the ball and Das Flurry there to take it at his left hand side. This time it's Andy Ayres. Made the move from stand of half, scrum half to wingman with enormous success. Now has a Welsh grandmother, so he's hoping against hope that Wales will play him. Not only in the European Championship as they term it, but also in the World Cup. Must be in with a great shout, playing his best rugby of his career, I would suggest. Robinson getting it to Dory. Dory going through, looking for support. The support was there, but so also was the arm of the number three, David Hill, for Lee. And the ball going to Robinson. Robinson putting up the bomb. Danger here. Ramshaw getting the ball. The ball looked for a moment as it escaped the full bat's grasp. Paul Wynn Stanley doing well to eventually get hold of the ball after seeming a trifle indecisive. And Sean Fanning again having to act as a forward and make the drive. The Cougars, though, very much in the seat as far as defensive work concerned and Simon Irving literally came 10 metres to his right to get in at the tackle then moving across again to make sure there's no break down the middle and the Cougars driving people back immediately get the ball this has been one of their trademarks throughout the season the defensive system that Phil Larder the coach has installed in the lads and the sixth tackle indicated and Lee basically haven't gained five yards, which is testimony to the tremendous defensive skills. Andre Stoop anxious to get more points on the board after that try. Keith Dixon bobbing, weaving, turning round. He again been here at Keith for a while, but I would suggest this by far his most successful season. And Gareth Cochran going to the line. 12-0, remember, the Cougars in the lead. Ramshaw getting it to Chris Robinson. Ball out to Martin Wood. Wood got Nick Pinkney outside him. Now we're going to see that electric fine pace from Pinkney. Just held up on the 10-metre line. Andy Ayres coming in at acting half. Back to put the ball in field. And big Brendan making the drive. Turning round, looking to pass the ball. No one there. And perhaps the arm also stopping things. Robinson put it the short kick through, not the best of kicks as far as he concerned, and Lee more than grateful to drop on the ball and make five drives and then presumably the kick. Lee under the shadow of their own posts, 12 nil in arrears, and it has to be said, looking as though they're gonna stay at nil throughout the game, the way they're playing at the moment, certainly no sign of any of their players being able to make the break. The kick over the top by Bannister, Andre Stoop, waiting for the ball to stick in the mud rather than bounce in the mud, and just having to be content to try and make the drive to the halfway line. Robinson on the short side, Keith Dixon faced with insurmountable odds one would suggest over there certainly a Lachlan and the scrum half Maloney were intent on knocking him down Wood back to Flaherty Flaherty over the halfway line Flaherty making the break the full back in front of him the full back doing well to knock him down Ramshaw quickly putting the ball into midfield Robinson getting it to Martin Wood Wood with players outside him missing the man out Andre Stoop again giving that dummy to Andy Ayres Andy Ayres slipping as he tried to come inside Fanning and being held 10 metres short. Ball into midfield, not the best of passes, slowing things down. And Jason Ramshaw bringing it left. Long ball out to the wing again. Andy Ayres, short kick through, goes straight into the arms of David Hill. And David Hill tackled on his own try line. That type of kick either looks brilliant or comes to nothing whatsoever. And unfortunately, as far as Andy Ayres concerned, on that occasion, the ball literally went straight into the lean man's hands. Bitterly cold here at Cougar Park, a cold wind sweeping down the field. If anything, it's in the favour of the Cougars at the moment, but I think one of the problems is going to be towards the end of the game when they get very, very cold, very, very wet, and it's then going to be a question of fitness being the winner, whichever side is the fitter. And again, I'm sure it's going to be Keithley they're going to be the side who will finish the better. Lee getting a mud bath. Again, the scrum half 
rather the hooker Bannister moving the ball along but Lee not being able to make any progress of any sort. David Hill, the man who's playing the ball. The Keithley tackling again very much on the mark. Men anxious and desperate to get in at the tackle. Martin Wood doing well along with Grant Dury. Halfway line within sight. The kick over the top. And the air's just quite content to stop the ball, put it in field to Andre Stoop. Andre Stoop making the run. Centre of the field, getting up to play the ball to Jason Ramshaw. Out to the left, penalty kick being given to the Cougars. And the referee intimating that at least three players were offside. And Keith Dixon going to put the ball into touch. Cougars in the lead, 12-0. I'm sure that they'll be looking for more points to increase that points for at the top of Division 2 and Big Brendan Hill. Big Brendan Hill looking as though he might be limping slightly out there. Whether or not he's got an injury, I'm not sure. And this time it's Grant Dory. Grant Dory going forward within sight of that trial line. The lead defence scrambling quickly. Grant Dory not very happy. One or two things happened. A bit of a skirmish going on and the referee very quickly getting between them. good sense prevailed by both Grant Dury and his opposite member there, Talk Liku, the Fijian. When one or two punches looked in a minute, at least they had the good sense to realise it was totally stupid and get out of the way. And the referee, I'm sure, has given the penalty to the Cougars. And we'll see, no doubt, Simon Irving having the kick at go. Simon Irving just having the sponge put over his eyes to get rid of some of the mud. Ronnie Barrett. I'm going to say racing away to the dugout, but perhaps trotting away would be more adequate. And Simon Irving coming up in the 24th minute to take a kick at goal, which will put the Cougars 14-0 in the lead. Irving with the statutory pyramid of sand underneath the ball. Rugby Union, of course, they use this plastic disc these days, and also one or two rugby league players are using it in this day and age. Never really asked Simon whether or not he preferred to use the disc or the sand. Here he comes up with the kick at goal. Easy goal kick as far as he concerned, and the Cougars 14-0 in the lead, and the loudspeaker system playing a record that must be rapidly getting worn out the number of times that Irving's been on the score sheet this season. Match sponsor today, like Chimani, is Herbert Roberts Limited, ties and finishes, that's Herbert Roberts. Uh, Puma Ball sponsor is Tony Clark, ABS Body Shop. And Ingram with the, the kickoff. The What's the odds on Chris Car. Robinson taking the ball and, and parting to Darren Fury? That Nick Pinkley, the man who takes it. Ingram obviously changing the script, but Darren Fleur is the man who's there to make the second drive, and this time the half dummy move means that Brendan Hill receives the ball, taking literally four people to try and drag him down. Brendan looking a wee bit aggrieved there for some reason, and the ball coming close to the acting halfback situation means that Gareth Cochran didn't make two feet of progress. Good break. Cochran over the halfway line, racing to the 20 metre line, gets it to Irving. Irving going for the try line. Can he get the ball in field? Irving still going forward. There's the sight of the try line behind him. And the quick play of the ball, Chris Robinson. Chris Robinson getting it to Stoop. Stoop. Dying with the ball after looking twice as though he might part out to the Andy Ayers wing. And this time Robinson putting the kick through, knock on by Lee. So the Cougars will have the head and ball very much in the driving seat, 14 nil up. And the one imagines beginning to wonder quite why they're here on such a cold, damp evening. Move there that's brought the Cougars a few tries this season. Used it to the wing, this time the wing was covered. 
Then Jason Rabshaw doing well to hold on to the ball from not the best of passes. And Diaz running across the face of the lead defence and not able to get the pass in. And Jason Ramshaw giving it back to midfield. Two metres away from that chalk. Chris Robinson with the kick over the top. Nick Pink with the first. Keith and on to get there with the kick. That wee bit too hard going into the dead ball area. So Lee will have the opportunity of six drives. Sean Bannister there. Number nine, who's the first man to get to the ball. And again, Sean Fanning, eager for work. And it's amazing how the role of a winger has changed over the years. Not too many years ago, all the wingmen used to stand out on the wing and literally wait for the centre to pass to them. Now, their coaches tell them they've got to come into the first man at the play the ball and make the drivers the forwards used to do in days of old. The game really has quickened up enormously. <coughs> Lee with the opportunity now of showing us their attacking skills but certainly at the moment the Cougars defence proving too strong for them. The big number eight, Tiku, going forward. He, bit of a problem for them on their overseas register and they have to make their minds up as to what to do with him next season. The ball going right. Lee trying desperately to offload the ball out to the wing. Penalty kick going to Lee for a head high tackle and Gareth Cochran having a word of advice from the referee. Referee telling the crowd why the penalty was given. And Lee, to the credit, running the ball along to look to get points on the board in the way of tries rather than penalty kicks. And Liku again, the man who makes the initial drive and is then tackled. Good pass. Lee with an opportunity of putting points on the board. Coup's defence missing a tackle for arguably the first time. David Hill, the lead centre, within sight of the try line. Ball going loose, but I think Lee are going to get there first. In fact, it's the loose forward Scott Martin who gets to the ball. Again, a position of danger as far as the Cougars are concerned. 14 0 in the lead. The forwards making the drive, trying to get the position from where presumably a plan move can be put on. The ball out to the wing, he tackled. Cougars there in force, long pass out, might well be dangerous here. The kick over the top, is there going to be a try here? In fact, yes, certainly Lee going into the corner. Sean Fanning, a man who's done a lot of work with the ball when he's been in defensive situations getting on the end of a good kick by David Hill, taking it comfortably, went for the corner, and Diaz had absolutely no chance of getting across to him, and the first points on the board, as far as Lee concerned, the scoreline reading 14-4, and Fanning, the man who kicked the goal, about to try and put the points on the board. Difficult position as far as the goal kick are concerned. Verts on the edge of the field. And one would imagine he may have a problem or two here. The cold wind sweeping literally down and across the field, which makes life difficult for the players of both sides. And you can no doubt hear Phil Larder's voice in the background going down to the dug out at the far side of the field, issuing a few instructions. The lights of the garage behind the ground shining brightly, the kick coming up certainly looks useful, but in fact fading and going away from the posts and the Cougars 14-4. Ten minutes of play left, 
and I've no doubt the Cougars will be trying desperately hard to put more points on the board in order they can make the position at half time secure and keep the coach Phil Larder happy. Chris Robinson from the muddiest part of the ground getting up to take his kick. Long kick down. Oh, and a dreadful order by Lee. That a coach's nightmare. I'm sure that Ian Lucas, the ex Wigan prop, who's the coach now of Lee and has seen a lot of improvement, will be literally tearing his hair out in the mistake of that magnitude. Under absolutely no pressure, good pass as well. And yet Lee man knocked on and gave Keithley the advantage. <coughs> Robinson to Martin Wood to Simon Irving. Irving gets the ball back to Stoop. Stoop to Nick Pinkney. Nick Pinkney stretching forward and able to make any real progress. Martin Wood going for the line. Martin Wood stretching forward and the try given. So the error by Lee a couple of minutes ago has proved tremendously costly. A coach's nightmare. A knock on giving Keith the other advantage and virtually from the scrimmage. Martin Wood going in for the try. And nine minutes left of this first half. Won't be very much injury time, being very few stoppages. And Martin Wood getting his record played across the ground with the crowd rocking to it. And Simon Irving coming up to take the kick at goal. Round about eight minutes left and the scoreline reading 18-4. And Simon Irving hoping that he'll make the score 20 points to four with this goal kick. Coming up, the crowd tell you how good it is and absolutely no problems whatsoever for Simon Irving. The ball going directly between the posts. Both touch judges for once not even looking at each other, both raising their flags on high. And Keithley going into the lead 20 points to four with eight minutes left of this first 40 minutes. Brendan Hill, who I suggested might have had a slight injury, has gone off. And Ian Gately, who has had concussion or has been suffering from concussion a few weeks ago, now 100% OK, comes out to take his place in the middle. Chris Robinson gets the ball to Martin Wood. Martin Wood got Andy Ayres alongside him. Chris Robinson couldn't make his mind up with his pass to Martin Wood or Grant Bird, who eventually dies the death, and Ian Gately coming in for his first piece of the action. Not getting very far as Lee up in force. Grant Dirty forcing his way. And the crowd perhaps not too happy about what looked like an elbow going in, but certainly no complaints from Ian Gately. And the referee signifying the sixth tackle. 20 points to four, remember, the Cougars in the lead and Chris Robinson putting the kick over the top. Stopped by Sean Fanning, 10 metres away from his own trial line. And Ian Gately not being able to stretch himself, but certainly Cougar players are plenty alongside there. A reminder that Simon Irving kicked to goal to put the Cougars in the lead. Then an Ayres try converted by Irving. Irving, a stoop try and Irving penalty. 14-0 at that stage. Then a right, I'm sorry, a Fanning try for Lee made it 14-4. And then we've had a Martin Wood try converted by Simon Irving, bringing it to the current score of 20 points to four. And Lee, again, to pen deep in the hound half, but a good break. Chris Robinson doing well to get across to the touchline side and drag him down. The people in the stand giving him a well-earned round of applause as he raced across to get to the touchline. But Lee, for the moment, looking dangerous. Is it another break here by the loose forward, Scott Martin? In fact, the Cougars defence to Martin Wood getting back quickly and knocking him down. The kick over the top. This is how they scored their only try. And this time, Andy Ayres alive to the danger underneath the ball. Takes it on his own try line, but at least the Cougars have... Four more tackles to get away from there. Immediately trial line in the danger. And Liku coming on and being 
told by the referee that he'd made the flop. The referee's very, very keen on that type of thing at the moment. And it will be a penalty to the Cougars, which Keith Dixon takes with the trusted left boot and finds touch virtually on the halfway line. Jason Ramshaw to Ian Gately. Ian Gately going through. Just about settled a new contract, Ian Gately, for next season. And Grant Dory doing well. Grant Dory still going forward. 18 metres away from the trial line, a penalty kick given. And this time we're going to see a sin binning. Liku, the man who's going to be sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes. And the Cougars, for the last minutes of this first half, will only have 12 men. Jason Ramshaw going to take the tap. Darren Fleury. 12 metres from the try line. Jason Ramshaw, the acting halfback. Ian Gately going for the try. Three men intent on stopping him. Ramshaw again moving the ball left to Chris Robinson. Chris Robinson turns round looking for someone inside, but the defenders again very quick to stifle man and ball. Typical rugby league tackle and Martin Wood. Again, not having too much option, certainly got far nearer the try down than looked at first. And Ramshaw getting the pass back, perhaps a trifle ambitious rather than straightforward, a back pass which in these desperately muddy, difficult conditions proved too difficult for Martin Wood to take. And it is a scrum down with the Lee team not in any apparent hurry to get on with the game. In fact, looks as there's a brief discussion going on with the referee. The referee whistling as the scrimmage wheeled, and it's Lee, to state the obvious, getting the ball from the scrum. As I said previously, can't remember the whole of the season seeing a team win one against the head. Lee, with at the moment no ambition, down to 12 men, trailing by 20 points to four. And I'm sure Ian Lucas, their coach, will be having a few. Hard words to say to them in the second half. Lou, the man who's just played the ball. Jason Ramshaw getting into the tackle. No doubt both teams will make a change of strip at half time. And I think in the second half, Lee are going to come out in red and white and the Cougars in their away strip, in fact. That was agreed before the game. And the kick through Keith Dixon to Andre Stoop. Andre Stoop taking the Cougars back to where they've been for so much of this game, inside the Lee half of the field. Robinson, long ball out. Good pass to Nick Pinkney. Nick Pinkney with that pace, going for the line. Can't get the ball to Andy Ayres where the try line was open, but credit to the Lee tacklers who got in and stopped the man and ball. Gately going like a train, gets away from the first wave of defenders, but can't stretch his bulk over the try line, and Chris Robinson moving it left to Andy Ayres. Andy Ayres. Gets it to Grant Dury. Grant Dury gives a dummy, going for the try line. Is Dury going to score the try? The answer is yes. The referee pointing to the try line, and with a minute left of play in this half, Grant Dury extends the Keithel lead to 24 points to four. The Keithel supporters are ecstatic, realizing now that unless something absolutely miraculously occurs in the second half, the Cougars are going to forward with a further two points in their quest for winning the second division and first division or as it might be called the premiership next season and Simon Irving with another opportunity of tagging on the two points or tagging on a further two points. One of Simon's complaints throughout the season has been the fact that the lads seem to prefer scoring tries in the muddier parts of the ground, which makes goal kicking extremely dangerous. But certainly Simon, with a personal ambition of 150 goals for the season, and within sight already of the 100, looks as though he's going to by far beat his previous best, which was in fact 99 goals the first time, or the first season he played professionally with the Leeds club when he first signed under David Ward's coaching. 
Simon Irving with that step which is now but this time no response from the two touch judges and I think this will be the last we're virtually into injury time at the moment the scoreline reading 24-4 reminder that Irving, Simon Irving kicked a penalty to put the Cougs in the lead and there's try converted by Irving then a stoop try an Irving goal 14-0 Lee came back with a Sean Fanning try after a good kick by David Hill. But since then we've had a Wood try and a Dory try. The first one converted by Simon Irving. And within sight of the half-time hoot to the scoreline reading 24-4 in favour of the Cougars. Another thoroughly professional performance. They'll be looking in the second half, I'm sure, to adding more points to better that points aggregate at the top of Division 2. But the main thing is that doing well and looking more than likely that a further two points are in the bag. Another 40 minutes to go, but difficult to see the Cougars relinquishing a lead of this magnitude. A 20 points lead against Lee is more than useful. And at the moment, Lee with one of their rare attacks of the half. Simon Irving being penalised for interference at the play of the ball. Sean Maloney having discussion all round as to what should happen. And rather surprisingly perhaps fanning the wingman coming in to have a penalty kick at goal. I'm sure the Cougars will be more than happy with this, realising that as they look at the clock behind them, they're within sight of half time. And this basically a rest as far as they're concerned and always of course the strong possibility that Fanning might miss the kick at goal. Twenty-four four. One imagines that the hooter will go practically as soon as he's taken the kick at goal. John Fanning, the wingman, with the kick. The kick fading and missing. 40 minutes coming up and the change of strip for both sides under the muddy conditions. And the kickoff coming now as Lee playing from left to right. The kickoff going deep. Stopped by Chris Robinson's foot, given to Davin Flurry. Flurry up to the 20 well, meters. Number was blue, 776. Collect your prize at the shop. After the, the ball match. coming out to Seven, Chris Robinson. Seven, Robinson six. and the airs giving a good ball to Stoop. Stoop knocking on the ball going loose, and the referee giving the scrum down as Andy Ayres gets in to get the ball. Apologies for the lack of commentary in the first 40 minutes. Unfortunately, we've had technical problems, but hopefully all is well now. And Lee putting the ball in the scrum. Lee down to 12 men. The wingman trying desperately to get through the middle, but strong tackling coming in. And Lee still in possession, moving the ball left. Darren Fleury in at the tackle, second tackle coming up. Five metres away from the Cougars line, with the Cougars in the lead. 24 points to four. And Lee looking for the break. For a moment, looked as though the standoff half, David Ingram, had managed it, but strong tackling coming in at the death. And Lee still going forward. Fourth tackle. Referee indicating to Keefley to get on side. The ball coming on the right hand side. Keefley coming strongly. The referee signifying the sixth tackle. And Sean Bannister, the hooker, kicked through. Ricochets goes directly to the wing taken well by Andy Ayres on his own try line Martin Wood with acting halfback just having to be content to make a couple of metres and again Keithley just making a few metres, Daz Flady coming forward still deep inside that 20 metre area, Chris Robinson coming forward making room, half step, looking forward to let the pass go but the ball coming wide. Keith Dixon putting the kick through. Not the best of kicks. Taken eventually by 
Lee's loose forward. Scott Martin and the ball going left. Keith Lee, from our position, looking to be playing against a fairly strong breach, certainly bitterly cold out there, and the pitch perhaps playing better than it looks from the side, certainly bags of mud, but the players managing to get a stud hold and play good open rugby. The still in possession, the ball gone loose, penalty against Grant Dordy for stealing the ball, and the penalty kick obviously going to Lee. In fact, rather surprisingly, going to have the kick at goal. I say surprisingly because they are trailing by 24 4. But obviously, the wingman Fanning, fancying his chances of kicking this, had an attempt just prior to half time when again it was felt that Lee would run the ball. And Fanning taking the kick at goal. Crowd. Obviously at the Lorcombe Lane end, expecting or hoping that Keith will get more points on the board. To date in the second half, most of the play being at the Roydings Avenue end. Where Lee are doing the attacking. And Fanning having to contend with a fairly vociferous Keith Lee crowd who don't approve of it. But the kick, in fact, hits the upright, goes inside, and they have two points on the board. 24 points to six, and Keith will bring the ball back to halfway for Chris Robinson to take the kick. Kick coming now. Ian Gately looking slightly offside, but referee allowing play to go on and Grant Dury, the first man into the tackle. Lee on the driest part of the ground, trying to bring the ball forward. Tacklers Gately and David Larder getting in strongly. The ball going left, coming back on the inside. Jason Ramshaw waiting for the man to come to him. Lee just outside their 20 metre line playing the ball. Gavin Fleury this time with the assistance of Martin Wood at the tackle. Back in the boggy area of the ground, certainly didn't look to play that one, but the referee allowing play to go on. They kick through and Andre Stoop taking the ball over his own 20 metre line. Three Lee men waiting to knock him down. Ramshaw to Keith Dixon. Keith Dixon will possibly try and come on the inside, but the defenders rise to it, taking him backwards. <coughs> Second tackle for Keithley. And Ramshaw using the short side. Darren Fleury. Ian Gately taking the ball. Ian Gately doing well. Gets the ball out to the wing. And the airs coming inside. Again, the lead cover coming across to knock him down, but Ian Gately did well. One or two of the crowd feeling that Ayres was held down. Long pass, David Larder. Larder got a man outside him, Nick Pinkney. Pinkney tackled just inside the lead half to Martin Wood. Wood putting the kick over the top. The lead full back, Paul Win Stanley taking the ball, and Martin Wood, the man who kicked the ball, getting a round of applause as he gets there to effect the tackle. Lee inside their 20 metre area. 24-6, Keithley in the lead. A win tonight will of course put Keithley three points cleared at the top of Division 2, with still a game in hand, so good position to be in, the ball going wide. Ian Gately strongly in at the tackle for a moment, thought the referee was going to penalise him, but Indicated, slapped across the shoulder, long pass out. <clears throat> Good play by Lee to the halfway line, and certainly their wingman there, David Wright, deserved a round of applause. Kick over the top, up and under. Andre Stoop underneath it, doesn't take it, the ball going loose. Lee going forward. Andre Stoop missing that ball, giving me possession on the 20 metre line and, of course, another six tackles. 
second tackle for Lee as they maintain pressure on the Keith Lee Cougars line and the ball coming out wide. Good break, good tackle as well. The standoff half, David Ingram did well, but certainly a good tackle coming in from Grant Doherty, but Lee on the attack, not the best of kicks, straight into Martin Wood's hands, but under the circumstances, perhaps Martin Wood doing well to keep hold of the ball. Ian Gately. Martin Wood looking as though he's received a bit of a mud bath third, and the ball with Gareth Cochran, Gareth Cochran going forward. Between the 20 metre line and the halfway line, Dury taken by two men, Sean Bannister and John Booth for Lee, and Chris Robinson gets it back to Fleury. Fleury over the halfway line. The referee shouting hell, the fifth tackle coming on the blind side to Robinson. Robinson with the little kick through, going to be taken by the wingman. And Lee just content to bring the ball forward through David Wright, just outside their 20-metre area. Strong tackling by Ian Gately and Chris Robinson. Lee moving the ball left. Inside pass, and no doubt the man who received it regretting it as Darren Clady gets in and knocks him down hard. the halfway line now through the hooker Sean Bannister in the middle of the muddy spot and presumably we'll see the kick over the top in fact Lee putting the kick through finding touch just short of the Cougars 20 metre line the referee looking at the touch judge for confirmation that the ball had bounced in the field of play and it will be a scrum down with Keith of course getting the head and the ball Time 24 4 to Keithley, the only scored in the second half. A penalty goal to Lee and Simon Irving looking to come on the inside route. Plays the ball quickly. Jason Ramshaw, in fact, it isn't Jason Ramshaw, Darren Clearer with the ball still inside the Cougars half. Robinson to David Larder. Larder with the sidestep in field but stopped just short of the halfway line. Ramshaw to Cochrane, Cochrane looking to over the halfway line, try and make the break, struggling forward, eight metres inside the Lee half. Chris Robinson with the ball to Grant Dury. Dury, long ball out to the wing to Andy Ayres. Andy Ayres looking to go on the outside, and the touch judge raising his flag up. Bit of a skirmish going on between one or two of the players. But nothing really to worry about. And the substitution going to be made. Two substitution, off comes Gareth Conker and along As comes. Darren Appleby comes on the field in the place of Darren Conker. Appleby. Appleby going to lose forward. <coughs> and Lee, as expected, getting the ball from the scrum. And Simon Irving having to look sharp as the wingman Sean Fanning came in from the wing. And Lee coming forward. Initial missed tackle, but good cover by the Cougars as two men come across, Darren Appleby and Grant Dury, a couple of Australians, of course. And Lee still trying to plough the way down the middle of the field. Still inside their own half. And repeats. They've banished to banish out there. Good pass, but the ball's gone loose. Keithley should have the ball here. In fact, Martin Wood retrieving it and putting the ball to Chris Robinson. Chris Robinson. Dodging, dancing here, there and everywhere, getting the ball out to the wing. Andy Ayres taking the ball at the second attempt and ten metres inside the Lee half, putting the ball in field to Chris Robinson, to Martin Wood. Short ball, David Larder trying to make the break and knocking on, in fact, the referee very much on the spot and very quick to spot that knock on, which wasn't certainly from our vantage point instantly visible. Lee with the ball coming on the short side. 
Knock on. Did the referee see that? In fact, the referee's missed it. He's looking at the touch judge. The touch judge is surely. And yes, he has. So it's a scrum down directly below our commentary point. Some four or five metres inside the lee half of the field. And it will be Chris Robinson to put the ball into the scrum if and when the two open side props get their heads together. And the ball coming in. Robinson to Martin Wood. Martin Wood getting the ball out to Andre Stoop. Andre Stoop over the halfway line. And Darren Fleury, acting hard back penalty. And could we see another sin bin? In fact, the referee just indicating what happened. I'd rather think that Keith Dixon is going to put this one into touch. Good kick by Keith Dixon. Scrum down inside the 20 metres. The crowd obviously hoping for a Keith to try. Jason Ramshaw just getting the players to line up. Grant Dory, the man who goes forward. Submerged by a Welsh of tacklers. Appleby with the ball. Appleby going straight forward. Directly under the shadow of the post, the ball going to Chris Robinson, to Ian Gately, back to Robinson. Robinson making a hash of it, knock on, Lee are in possession. And Keithley not at the moment putting it together. And the ball coming into midfield. Lee in possession, Keithley having to do the tackling. Twenty-four six, short side again being used by Sam Irving, along with Grant Dory in at the tackle. Five metres or so outside the Lee 20 metre line, and the ball into midfield. Back to the big men for Lee, but certainly no progress being made at the moment. Six tackle coming up. Are we going to see the run or the kick over the top? In fact, we're going to see the kick over the top. Andre Stoop waiting for it down below. I'm just content to allow it to go into touch. So, be a scrum down on the 10 metre line with Keithley having the advantage of the head and the ball. And a couple of substitutions going to be made by Lee in a moment or two. I think has now spotted the attempted substitutions just waiting for them both to happen certainly not the best of nights to be playing with the league Daniel and Lee are coming on the field in place of Tiku and Meadows Scrum down forming again, Chris Robinson to put the ball in, the ball going in, Keith Dixon coming into the stand-up half position but Robinson slipping and in fact knocking on at the same time, so... we a scrum down on the 10 metre line with Lee in with the shout. Lee coming across, good ball, putting the ball into midfield. Lee moving it across the backs and Lee still going forward, the full back win Stanley, the last man to get possession, into midfield. One of the men who's just come on taking the ball, Paul Daniel, he's been substituted. The ball coming out to the left, that's a good ball, but a good strong tackle coming on as the loose forward look to make the gap, Scott Martin, Lee in possession. Tackle from Cleary, but unfortunately met the man go. The ball's got to surely be a scrum down. In fact, no, my apologies. Martin Wood, of course, taking the ball, so play quite rightly allowed to go on. And that's Cleary struggling away to the 20 metre line. David Lard. Ian Gately trying to make progress. Robinson getting the ball to Gant Dury. Dury looking for the break, can't quite make it. Just short of the halfway line, ball on the blind side. Pass to Andre Stoop. Stoop 
tackled. Fifth, sixth tackle coming up. And the ball to Robinson. Robinson putting the short kick down. Going to be taken by the standoff half, David Ingram. But he too not able to make any progress. Going to be a substitution made by the Cougars in a moment or two. Chris Robinson going off the field with presumably Darren Appleby going to scrum half. And in the meantime, Lee in possession on their own 20 metre line. Sean Bannister going forward and he too feeling the weight of the Cougars tackling. Ball going left. Practically halfway through this second half, kicked down by Lee, finding touch. The substitution on comes Gareth Cochran, off comes Chris Robinson. All right. Chris Robinson going off, Gareth Cochran coming back on. And as I say, Darren Appleby will go to scrum half. Kicks the spare ball off, puts the ball in the scrum, and Darren Appleby moving the ball out to Martin Wood. Martin Wood having a tilt, trying to get through the middle, saw the gap. Nick Pinkney was there with him, Pinkney getting the ball, gets it to Cochrane, does well to take a rather difficult pass, does well to keep on going, just short of the halfway line. Penalty to the Cougars for holding down. Loose forward, the man who infringed there, Scott Martin. And Keith Dixon about to put the ball into touch, does just that. And the Cougars inside the Lee half and the Cougar crowd wanting another try. Grant Dewey. Up to the 20 metre line. Ian Gately knocks the first man off, but two men coming across take him down. 12 metres short of the try line. Blind side move, Appleby. Appleby going through the gap. Appleby just for a moment looked as though he'd made the break, but a despairing hand sprung out. The ball going to Ramshaw to Martin Wood. Martin Wood making a hash. There's a break here by Lee. Are we going to see a try, in fact? For a moment, looked as though the standoff half had made the move, David Ingram, but slipped in the mud, but Lee coming forward. Again, a missed tackle. Good tackle coming in from David Larder. Lee on the attack yet again. Ball going loose, but that certainly went backwards. No knock-on, Martin Wood doing well. And the referee indicating that the ball had gone back, no knock-on. And the pass coming out wide. Half tackled by Simon Irving, the ball going loose. Keith Dixon up very, very quickly. Helped by Gareth Cochran, so the Lee team forced back inside their own half. Kick over the top. And the ball going dead, so it'll be tapped 20 metre line. Stoop racing up quickly to try and get it played. Going forward. Jason Ramshaw from acting half back. Appleby trying to move the ball on wide and Darren Fleury. Still 24 6 in favour of the Cougars. Appleby moving it to Wood. To Appleby. Appleby again looking for the gap. Going through over the half wing. Martin Wood. Coming on the blind side, Gately to Martin Wood. Good pass out to Dury. Dury gets the ball back to Ramshaw, out to Andy Ayres. Andy Ayres coming in field. He too does well to get it to Gately. Gately moving the ball out wide to Pinkney. Pinkney going down the touchline side. Can Pinkney score one of those specials? Can't do it. Tackled inside the 20 metre area. Quick play the ball. The ball coming in field to Dury. Dury slipping, loses the ball, so the sixth tackle. Hand over to Lee, and Lee with the opportunity again to move the ball away, and this time the Cougars all offside.
Good kick by Lee. Tap on the halfway line and Keithley coming up. Ian Gately, the man who did the half tackle. Lee still coming forward. Strong tackle by Cochrane. Cochrane getting in very quickly and driving Lee back over the halfway line inside their own half of the field. The ball infield. Gwyn Stanley, the lethal back, the man who had possession. Sean managed to make him the break from acting halfback. The ball going left. Lee making a half break. Jason Ramshaw prostrate on the deck. Lee with the advantage of the extra man. Half chance here out there and the good tackle from Irving. Irving tackling him, six tackles, so Keithley in possession. Jason Ramshaw still prostrate in the middle of the park. And it's Andre Stoop with the run. Andre Stoop doing well, getting outside his own 20 metre area. Keith Dixon putting the ball in field to Lard. Lard are going forward. And the referee indicating offside but sensibly stopping the play as Ronnie Barrett, the Keith the physio giving Jason Ramshaw some treatment. And Chris Robinson having to limber up on the touchline side, but Jason Ramshaw, I think, getting to his feet. Ricky Winterbottom coming on to have a look. at the moment as Jason Ramshaw still receiving attention the referee is stopping play because the ball actually had come to rest just alongside the incident Lee Physio also giving treatment to a couple of their players and in the meantime Jason Ramshaw looking OK, Keith Dixon going to take the penalty and the round of applause. In fact, Keith Dixon taking the short turn. Gately going forward. This time it's going to be Darren Fleury. Fleury again up to the halfway line. Trying to play the ball quickly and the mud inhibiting progress. Forward pass, certainly. second half, it has to be said that there's a bitly cold wind out there, but Lee at the moment coming forward, the ball going loose, can Simon Irving get that? In fact, the answer to that is no, as the Lee man drops on the ball, and the ball in field. Grant Dury, second tackle. Lee again on the halfway line, where they seem to have spent so much time in the second half. Played in Ramshaw trying desperately to tackle him and surely the referee must have shouted held. In fact the answer to that is yes and banished to going from acting half. Bannister moving it out, short kick through, covered, I think, by Keith Dixon and Stoop, and the Lee man diving rather despairingly, going clattering into the boards. And the referee just waiting to see all is well, which it is. And it's Nick Pinkley coming forward. Ian Gately, the next man to have a tilt. Ramshaw seemingly okay again adapting halfback and putting it on the 
short side where Gareth Cochran gets to practically the halfway line and the crowd not too happy on the far side of the park for some reason. Martin Wood, good long ball to Stoop. Stoop going forward, Irving alongside him. Halfway line. Irving to Larder, Larder going through the six tackle indicated by the referee. Keith Dixon with the ball, putting the kick over the top. Lee again in possession. Second row man, Paul Daniel, being tackled just outside his 20 metre line, and Lee looking to have extra players over on the far side of the field. and. For a moment, looked to be danger as Lee tried to make the initial break. Again, strong tackling, driving Lee back. Has to be said, apart from the try they scored, they have seldom looked, despite a lot of possession in the second half, like scoring tries. Six tackle coming up. Again, one imagines we'll see the kick over the top. In fact, the bottom. Simon Irving getting underneath it, takes it easily. Can't get away. And Andre Stoop. <coughs> Ian Gately, the next man to have a go. Over the halfway line, but certainly no signs of Keithley breaking the stranglehold which Lee seemed to have on them in the second half. And Martin Wood. Martin Wood electing to go on his own rather than give Gareth Cochran the ball. Darren not a bit, acting half. Grant Dury coming on the blind side. Dury turning the ball back inside. Six tackle indicated. Keith Dixon putting up the supposed bomb, but certainly no prospects. And the Lehman doing well, getting away down the outside. It's the number two, Fanning. Fanning going forward. Good tackle coming in. Fanning trying to get up quickly. Might be an argument, I suppose, he was held down, but the referee, quite rightly in retrospect, allowing play to go on and Lee bringing the ball into midfield. Lee, again looking dangerous. Good ball. Might be a try here. Andre Stoop doing well. The ball's gone out. The referee says a forward pass. And play stop for the scrum down and for a moment thought that Grant Dory and the number six David Ingham for Lee were injured but both of them getting up rather slowly but anyway both of them were okay and the ball going in the scrum to Appleby, Appleby looking to make the break Larder the next man to have a go Second tackle. And Martin Wood from acting half. And the airs inside the Lee half of the field. Appleby again with the ball. Well taken by Gately. Gately, lovely pass to Stoop. Stoop going forward. Can he get the ball in field? Yes, a brilliant try there. Keith Dixon, but it has to be said, a magnificent pass from Ian Gately made that try. Stoop went down the left-hand side, got the ball in field to Dixon, and the try at the side of the post. A lean man passed straight down below, and a brilliant move there by Ian Gately. Twenty-eight-six with the girl kick to come. Simon Irving, of course, the man who's taken the girl kick, the man who's at the top of the rugby league point scoring at the moment. 
memory serves me right, around about three or five points in front of John Schuster of Halifax. Irving coming up, hits the post, goes in off. And another two points to keep through with the score going to 30 points to six. And round about six, seven minutes of ordinary time left. But there will, I would imagine, be some injury time. Super Simon, all right. <clears throat> two points now assured for the Cougars to take them three points clear at the top of Division Two with that game in hand, which could be vital. And Darren Fleury taking the ball from Ayres. This time it's Gareth Cochran. Gareth Cochran still going forward. <coughs> and Ian Gately. <laughs> Making the mistake. And the scrum down just outside the Cougars 20 metre line. <coughs> League in possession. The number four to Lachlan going forward, well known name over in Lancashire, Lachlan. And Lee inside the Cougars 20 metre area, David Lard and Gareth Cochran, the two younger members of the pack in at the tackle. Ian Gately this time tackling the loose forward Scott Martin, stopping him dead in his tracks. But Lee inside that 20 metre area where they seem to have spent a lot of time in this second half. Clary and Grant Dory in at the tackle, eight metres away from the try line. Managed to the long ball. Is the sliding defence going to get across? Well, we shall see in a moment. Certainly the ball going in field. Lee still trying desperately to bring the ball away and score the try. Six tackle indicated by the referee. <coughs> Good defensive work by Keithley. The touch judge telling the referee that in fact they'd pushed him into touching girls, so it's a tap 20 metre line. Keith Dixon coming up quickly to take the ball and electing to go on his own. Five minutes of ordinary time left here. No doubt on this rather cold February evening, the players will be only too pleased to get inside the warm dressing rooms and have a shower. Lard over the halfway line. Can we see another Keithley try before the end of the game? This time, Appleby with the ball. Did well to keep hold of the ball. Looking for the break. Does well. Gets the ball to Martin Wood. Martin Wood going forward. Quick play the ball. Simon Irving moving it out to Appleby. Appleby over the 20 metre line. Lovely ball to Cochran. Cochran to Gately. Gately puts the ball in field. Simon Irving gets it. Still in possession. Six tackle. Andrew Stoop going forward. The ball ricochets. Is it six more tackles? In fact, the referee saying it inadvertently touched the Lee man. Andre by no means happy by that, but uh, one has to say from here, I think the decision was right. Lee inside their own 20 metre area. As I say, a Cougar victory now assured forward pass, so. The referee giving you a scrum down. We're <laughs> getting the ball out to Andy Ayres. Andy Ayres running forward, still going forward. Nobody up with him, no one to pass to. Top there, chosen by so Spencer, the number 10, Pink, Pink to get it to all to Cochrane, Cochrane going forward, making the drive, looking desperately to offload, can't do so, and is fact driven back to the 20 metre line, Grant Dury, the man who gets the Keithley Man of the Match award, 
Ian Gately, the man who's still trying to drive forward to the trial, and Jason Ramsey, for some reason, totally stood still, quite why, I'm not sure. And the referee, in fact, looking at the touch judge and gives the knock on. Keithley, obviously, the... So they are Gondori top captain chosen by Dave Spencer, Miller, Party sponsor Robert Roberts, Limited, Dyson Fishers, the knocking up, and so the boss sponsor was down. the Clark Bonnet Shop, and then sponsors the Keithley's Proton Centre. And the, the crowd today was 2,932, all right. 2,932 in Treffy supporters here this evening on a bitterly cold night, and that after the game was in doubt until round about lunchtime, the groundsman doing a marvellous job all morning, knock on by Lee, Simon Irving in possession, quick play the ball, the ball going in field to Keith Dixon, Keith Dixon doing well, racing around, Andy Ayres outside him, Andy Ayres going for the corner, good try by Andy Ayres to perhaps finish the scoring, and brilliant work again by Keith Dixon, so the score going to 34 points to 6, to so to go 34 points to six and Simon Irving with the kick from the touchline side Simon Irving with the kick from the touchline, Andy Ayres, the man who scored the try after it has to be said, brilliant work by Keith Dixon, and Andy Ayres coming up, Simon Irving coming up with the kick, the crowd were for a moment on their feet, but dropping just short, certainly conditions extremely difficult out there, and I think perhaps that can be one of the reasons why the second half being slightly disappointing, Phil Larder on his way around getting a round of applause from the Cougar fans and another two points in the bag as they say deep kick Darren Fleary I think it is, although yes I'm sure it's Darren Fleary who has the ball and it would be nice if the Cougars could finish off with yet another try Lee, to their credit, kept doing well in their defensive ranks. Martin Wood making the break, gets a good ball away. Is it going to be a break here? Nick Pinkney's making the break down the touchline side. Nick Pinkney's going away. Brilliant try. Superb try by Nick Pinkney. That really just put the icing on the cake and the crowd in the stand all on their feet and Pinkney showing that outstanding pace that is so capable of scoring the try down the touchline side and Simon Irving with another kick and go and the scoreline going to 38-6 That must have been scored on the stroke of time. Pingley with a super try there. Simon Irving with the kick at goal. And the scoreline going from 34-6 to 38-6. The wind sweeping from the Pennines down this track against the boot of Simon Irving. Irving coming up and the ball going wide. So 
Simon did the hoot again. The crowd make their way towards the entrances. The players all shake hands. And after being in the lead 24 for at half time, the Cougars running out winners by 38 points to 6 and retaining that spot at the top of Division 2. The boys will be here in town. Bromley down here, 3.15. Keithley versus Bromley. Well played to the Cougars.